Hello, welcome to Each Budget Brews. I'm Tim, and tonight I'm covering a $100 budget Malcolm and Timna. But before we get started, please check out our Discord and our Patreon. Links are in the description below. And if you like our content, please hit that like, share, subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Mullen for Malcolm is an adaptive Esper mid-range deck that leverages consult. The budget version uh, was built by me. It is based off of the uh, budget list version that was that is curated by Benzelobe, the monster. <laughs> it was I'm probably butchering that name. Uh, and chaotic spark. Uh, this list actually took first place at um, Silicon Dynasty about a month ago. From as of recording this video, maybe slightly longer, uh, back in January, and um, it's a very nice. Esper mid-range list that can generate lots of mana, draw lots of cards, and has consult as its game plan. Uh, Malcolm is a 2-2 for a blue and two colorless, uh, flying, and whenever a pirate deals combat damage to a player, uh, you create a treasure. Get to use that for whatever color manners you want, because I just totally blanked for a second about what treasures did. And then Timna... Uh, is your car is one of your main card draw engines? So that's a human cleric. She's a two two for black or white and a colorless. She has life link, and then at the beginning of your post combat main phase, you may pay X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of opponents you dealt damage during combat. So if you attack all three opponents and connect, then you draw three cards. You pay three life, um, one life for one card, two life for two card, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One of the things with with being on a budget is that it's it's hard to fit in all like the whole Adnos package, the console package, and then also hit, fit in a Doomsday package. I thought that it'd probably be most effective to just simply go with the Doomsday package because it's pretty easy for you to set up a, a Doomsday pile and then crack it with Timna and Malcolm because. Malcolm has flying, thus kind of makes uh, you being able to draw the first card, and then you can start using cards like Frantic Surge. Um, you can slot in like Cataxian Probe, Street Wraith, uh, Gush, if you really want it, to kind of help you crack that pile and get to your Thassa's Oracle. That was why I went with that. So Demonic Consultation is going to be the main way, like, Demonic Consultation and Thassa's Oracle are going to be the main way we win. So, uh, consult, Demonic Consultation is one black. You name a card. It's an instant. And then you exile the top six cards of your library. And then you exile cards from your library until you um, hit the named card. Generally, what you do is you name a card that's not in your deck. So, that way you have no cards in your library. And then you play Thassa's Oracle. Which is a Merfolk Wizard 1-3 for blue-blue. And it has an enter the battlefield trigger of whenever Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion of blue. And then you put, put up to one on top. And then if those cards are equal to or less than your devotion of blue, you win the game. So since you have zero cards in your library and Thassa's Oracle has a devotion of two, even if the Thassa's Oracle gets removed, if you have zero cards in your library, you'll win the game. All right. And then we have a couple of redundant versions of that. Uh, we have Laboratory Maniac, which is like the OG version of this card, which is just simply if you are to if you would draw a card and you are unable to draw a card, you win the game. And then as a budget version for a backup consult, we have Divining Witch, which does require a little more setup due to the fact that it has a you have to tap it, so it is affected by summoning sickness. Uh, is one black, one colorless. It's a spell shaper. And you pay a black and a colorless and you tap it, discard a card, and then it does exactly what Demonic Consultation does, where you name a card, you remove the top six cards of your library, and then you exile cards till you hit the named card. And again, generally when you're playing this, you're going to name a card that's not in your deck. So you have zero cards in the library, then you play your Thassa's Oracle and kind of go from there. All right. So outside of those few cards, really, to kind of win the game, the rest of the deck is interaction. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and, and it has a lot of interaction. So 
Uh, I will find links to some resources on Doomsday Piles, but the main one, like, for me, is going to be, obviously, my consult, my Oracle, Street Wraith, Gitaxian Probe, and then, like, Frantic Search is kind of kind of be, like, my, my baseline pile. So that way I can um, draw, two, draw two of the five cards for free, draw the last two, um, and discard them. Uh, for and then untap my land to be able to play my consult, my oracle. So, so you draw the first one, go down. So you draw the first one off of a Timna draw, putting you to four cards. Then you pay the two life for either the probe or the street wraith to draw the next one. You pay the two life to draw into your frantic search, and then your frantic search draws your last two. Then it untaps your three lands, and you play your consult, your oracle, and you win. Um, and then if or your lab man. And then you have to have an additional draw trigger for the lab man. Just FYI. Whereas with the Oracle, you don't. So some of the kind of like notable cards for interaction are you have lots and lots of silence effects. So not only can you run like regular silence, which is just one white opponents can't cast spells for the rest of the turn. You can cast, you can play things like mandate a piece, which while can only be cast during combat. Uh, the fact that, like, one of the things I've noticed, especially playing these, like, $100 decks against other kind of similarly budgeted or similarly power level decks is the game tends to be very board-centric and very combat-centric. And having a, a silence that you can cast in combat generally can save you a lot more than you think from dying to, like, lethal combat damage. Also, um... If they try to remove your effects, you can use the mandate to like clear the stack because part of the condition is that it ends the combat phase. So wherever you cast it in combat, once this resolves, you just go to the next main phase. So a lot of times what I'll do with this one is I will declare attackers. I'll deal my damage with my Timna. And then there's a, a priority pass after damage is dealt. But before you leave combat, you cast mandate to leave combat but you don't lose your triggers because you've resolved them. And then you can get your Timna draws. Uh, another one that can also double as Grave Hate is Cal uh, Calamity's Wake. Uh, this one does require, affects you also. So do watch out for that. But if you've already set it up where all you have to do is just play your Thassa's Oracle or you're winning off of your like Divining Witch, you can play under this just fine. And then it kind of acts as protection. Then, so those are like the two kind of like super neat, um, kind of spicy silence effects we have. Uh, but then we also have like a bunch of sweepers, kind of like citywide burst, bust, uh, which is double white. It destroys all creatures with power four or greater. Now, th the thing that's nice about this is all your creatures tend to be smaller. So citywide bust tend, you just play under it perfectly fine because you don't have any creatures with toughness of four. <laughs> I think there's one in the deck and we really are only playing it because it tutors up um nice drift of phantasms and that's the tutor up um because it's a three drop and it tutors up uh the doomsday. So this one's essentially a one-sided wrath. Um furthermore, we're also playing March of the Swirling Mist as well. Uh what's nice about this one is you can actually just exile you can pay one blue and then exile blue cards from your hand to reduce the cost of the spell by two. So essentially what that does is that basically pays two into the X for you by exiling a blue card. And then you just phase out whatever creatures you need gone to a either connect with Timna to crack your doomsday pile or get any hate bears out of the way. So that way you can win. Um, those are a couple. And then like you get counter spells. So a couple of the ones I wanted to highlight was first one is lose focus. It's one blue, one colorless instant has replicate of a blue which will copy the spell and then it just counters a spell unless it's controller pays two. So in this instance is basically like a, a cancel with upside where you can pay blue, blue one, and then it counters a spell unless they pay two twice. And they also have to counter two copies for it to um, not resolve. So it makes it a little bit harder to kind of interact with as well. Just kind of something to think about. And then uh, we also are playing Delay. Uh, again, 
in in a, in, a, in a previous video, I had talked about mana bases and I had talked about reducing uh, pip requirement. If you look, a lot of these spells are like one blue, one black, one whatever, and then like maybe a colorless or two. Uh, for the most part, not obviously with city white buses, white white, but it's that's the way you can do things like cast city white bust and then have mana open to help protect it as well. So. A delay is one blue, one colorless counter target spell. It'll hit creatures. Again, back to my earlier conversation, uh, like my earlier point of that, these like ultra budget decks tend to have a lot of creature based combos, tend to be very board centric. So there tends to be a lot of combat damage that happens. And having something that can hit creature based combos is really important. And then what it'll do is when, when it counters that spell, it'll exile it and put three time counters on it. So three, three turns is a long time in Commander. I mean, a long, long time. Like, we'll just assume somebody has a fast start and they try to threaten a win on turn three. Well, now they can't get that. They can't threaten that same win till turn six. And that gives everybody three turns to kind of prepare for it. So, you know, it, it's one of my more favorite. It's like one of my, it's like kind of one of the first like two mana counter spells I'll start putting in a deck, especially because it hits creatures as well. And then... And then not only that, we've also got like spot removal. So uh, one of the ones I wanted to highlight was cut down. Cut down's just one black. Destroy target creature with total power and toughness of five or less. So that will hit like a one four. It'll hit a two three, a three two. As long as their total power and toughness is less five or less. So it hits like all of the important like CDH creatures like Dream of Magistrate, Op Agent, Ava Mind Sensor. Uh, it'll hit... Dockside, now, I mean, if you want to kill a Dockside, I don't know why you would, because they'll just reanimate it most of the time. But it'll hit, like, pretty much any hate bear for the most part. There's very few it doesn't hit. And then, on the more expensive side, but I think it's re it's very, very universal, and it's an instant, is Fracture. Fracture will destroy an artifact, an enchantment, or a Planeswalker. I know there's not a ton of Planeswalkers that see play, but... It's literally just a disenchant with upside. And if you build your mana base, like to be able to support it, it shouldn't be very cost prohibitive. Um, I've also got like disenchant in the Kasarian board as well. And then kind of down below, like kind of like the next section is we've got like some notable cards. These are some of these are more like redundant copies of the effects mentioned earlier and like the protection and interaction. And then some are just kind of like a little bit spicier. So like the first one is Dress Down. Uh, what Dress Down is nice for is answering people's dock sides and Thaskel's Oracles. And it replaces itself because it has flash. So it's one blue, one colorless. It has flash. When there's a battlefield, it draws, uh, you draw a card. So, okay, two mana, draw a card. It's not the worst. Um, and then all creatures lose all abilities. So... This is really good for stopping creature-based combos, which if, which again, back to the earlier, uh, back to my earlier point, is that especially down to ultra budget, there is a lot of creature-based combos, and being able to sh shut those abilities off is very important, and it will do it for a whole turn, and you can interact on your opponent's turn with it, and then it goes away, and then you can untap and win with your own Thassa's Oracle. So it, it's like a like a like a humility that you can just time it and and it's not a big deal. Um up next is Grim Hireling. So Grim Hireling is is pretty nice in the fact that not only does Balco make treasures, but this will also make additional treasures, but it's also on board removal. And one of the things that these um Esper decks kind of tend to be a little bit slower than the decks with red in them. So having the ability to just kind of convert that mana into removal on board without having to take cards out of your hand is really nice. So this card just kind of does everything that you need. It makes mana, it gets rid of opposing problems. And then if you have Malcolm in this in play, every time Malcolm connects, it's making three treasures, which is really nice. Um, so 
Again, it's kind of got the same clause where it'll make two treasures for each opponent that dealt damage. So the ceiling on this is six. I've often found that like you're really not getting more than four. Uh, you're definitely getting two pretty very consistently, but relatively consistently you're getting four, but very rarely are you getting six. Um, and then you can just use those to make, you know, cast your spells or um, get rid of opposing creatures. And then kind of like a little bit spicier removal. Um, friend of the channel, Nate, also known as Eco. Uh, he's brewed a lot of the budget decks with me. He runs like a, a budget play discord. Uh, and in, his, in, in the Eureka build that him and I work on, he's been running these effects. And they've been doing really well because they hit each opponent. So Liliana's Triumph is one black, one colorless as an instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control a Liliana's Planeswalker, which we're not ever going to have a Liliana's Planeswalker in this deck. Each opponent discards a card also. And that's a, like a lot of value. But just for two mana, you get three opponent, opposing creatures off the board. It's a really nice effect. Um, so then up next is I wanted to include a Trinket Mage package. So the thing about Trinket Mage is it's a good tutor for Soul Ring in addition to some other stuff. And it's just like a good kind of a good all around utility creature to have. That you can like kind of blink or bounce and replay and just get extra value. But furthermore, I included this nice little package with it where we have Moon Snare Prototype, which is not only is it a one mana rock, uh, it's also technically removal. It's very poorly costed removal, but removal nonetheless. Uh, it kind of acts like a spring leaf drum where you can tap a creature or an artifact in the Moon Snare Prototype. You make one colorless mana. Or you can discard it and pay a blue and four and put a permanent, put a non-land permanent on top of its, on top or bottom of its owner's library. So that's like even better. Uh, we also included Tormod's Crypt just to have like some grave hate that we can tutor up kind of consistently. And then lastly in that package, um, there's also Pithy Needle. So Pithy Needle will allow us to just shut off any activated ability that we want. We just have to name the card. So a good example is like hitting opposing Thrasios or like it just has to be a non-mana ability. So like you can't shut off things like Silvala because that's a mana ability. But you can hit things like Thrasios is a good example or something like. Uh, a, a popular deck I like to play is Tropical Malcolm, which is actually, or Teamer Malcolm is another. Um, and so you can name like Glenhorn Buccaneer with it. And then that shuts that off just to kind of sell myself out a little bit. And that's kind of, and then in addition to that, you can get Soul Ring, you can get Ever Flowing Chalice, which I play a lot. Uh, a lot of times I'll play Spring Leaf Drum just to give you more options, but like, the main package is going to be Soul Ring for Ramp, uh, Moon Snare Prototype for Removal. Uh, you can get um, Tormod's Crypt for Grave Hate, and then Pithy Needle for um, Activated Abilities. There's a couple other cards that you could run um, that I'm drawing a blank on. They're actually all featured in the permanent-based interaction template on the website. Uh, a lot of the Trinket Mage targets are in there as well. And so I'll just give that a quick peruse. I'll link it in the description. And then also the, the rocks that we named as well. So, and then lastly, as far as just kind of like something to note is we are playing part as part of our Doomsday pile cards like Street Wraith, which are essentially just cards that we can pay to life or nominal mana to draw a card. Because part of that Doomsday pile is you have to have five cards in that pile. You have to have five cards in that pile, so you need free cantrips to kind of help you dig through. And this is one of the cheaper ones to do it. I One of the things that I liked about this deck is that it gives you the ability to play um, a little bit more control, uh, kind of on an ultra budget. Uh, you can still leverage Consult, uh, which is a very nice compact win con. And then your commander makes up, like helps fix your mana as well as provides you with card draw. 
And then, so you have all of the good tools for interacting, and then you have a very nice, clean, compact win con. This deck does budget pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm actually planning on making a couple other tiers, versions of it, all the way up. And the deck has been, has proven itself to be effective in, in the current meta. I mean, it did just literally take down a tournament, like, within the last month or so. So, I figured it was a, a nice one to highlight, and um, thanks again for joining me, and everybody... Have a good night. Bye.